everyone hi everyone uh, this is gladson working as assistant professor in the department of electronics and communication engineering erodu sengundra engineering college perundurai uh, here i am going to uh, talk about communication let me share my screen so as we know the main purpose of an electronic communication system is to transfer information from one place to another so the communication the main purpose of communication is to transfer information uh, or sharing of information from one place to another place so we can summarize the uh, processes involved in communication as transmission reception and uh, the processing of information so transmission uh, reception as well as the processing behind the um, communication so from uh, so that we can say uh, the information generated at one place is going to be transferred uh, to many locations so the information generated at one place is going to be transferred to many locations using electronic circuits so here in communication process the original source can be in analog or uh, set, uh, analog form or digital form so in analog form we can say uh, our human voice music or image still pictures whatever it may be any video so these are all some of the examples of analog uh, communi- analog signals and in if we, if the message signal is in digital form in the sense we can say uh, binary coded numbers or alpha numer- numeric codes uh, uh, or signals from uh, uh, computers or uh, teletype signals so whatever it may be these are all some of the examples of digital signals so an- as we know analog signals are time varying uh, signals uh, in terms of both uh, voltage in terms of both voltage and current it is a time varying signals um, that is continuously changing that is continuously changing uh, we can say sine and cosine waves or examples of analog signals or whereas in digital signals if uh, digital signals are nothing but uh the changes in discrete steps or levels the changes in discrete steps or levels um so what we are going to tell the information generated at one place is going to be transferred to different locations through some channel through some communication medium okay so uh, we can see the different blocks available uh, in the process of communication system so here we have a information source um, so the information source uh, i talked about information uh, source just before uh, so there are different forms of uh, uh, the message signals like analog form or digital form so in the second module is transmitter uh, so the uh, in, uh, the information generated at information source Uh, is going to be processed okay is going to be processed through the uh, electronic circuit called transmitter so there are different modules available in transmitter itself so if the uh, communication is in analog form then we may have a modulator we may have a modulator block in transmitter uh, so there is no need of uh, converting any analog signal uh, to some other form like a digital signal Uh, so we can directly transmit or we can directly process the analog signal generated in analog communication system uh, so the tra- the important module in transmitter is modulator okay now the modulated signal or transmitted signal is uh, is passed through a channel or transmission medium uh, now the uh, receiver the receiver block consists of Uh, demodulator so the opposite process of modulation is nothing but demodulation so demodulator and uh, if the modulation process is uh, digital in the sense so there will be a digital to analog converter okay there will be a digital to analog converter and uh, finally it is given to a destination so it reaches to the destination now um, when we talked about uh, the base band signal okay the baseband signal or message signal that is going to be originated at the information source information source um, so as i told you this message may be a human voice or still picture or a video signal okay now uh, this 
message signal generated is in physical form it is not in electrical form it is in physical form in nature so that uh, uh, um, an appropriate transducer is used to convert this uh, physical form signal into electrical signal okay an appropriate transmit uh, transducer is, is going to be used here to convert the um, messages generated which is in physical form to the electrical form um, okay now the output of this uh, uh, transducer which is an electrical form is called the base one signal okay the output of the transmitter uh, i mean transducer which is in electrical form is called the base one signal now the signal is given to a transmitter now the transmitter is going to modify the base one signal so as to make it suitable for the transmission over the channel so the transmitter the main purpose of transmitter is is going to modify the baseband signal uh, um, suitable for the transmission to suitable for the transmission over some transmission medium uh, okay so we 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 say that uh, that uh, the signal generated here that is the baseband signal may not be uh, possible to be transmitted over longer distances Okay. Over longer distances. Okay. So the transmitter um, consists of several subsystems like uh, uh, modulator. This transmitter consists of several subsystems like modulator. Uh, so as I told you, uh, so the signal is going to be processed. so suitable for uh, transmission over uh, some communication medium okay um, so the transmitters may consist of base band amplifiers or of amplifiers and a modulator or analog to digital converter in in the uh, analog to digital converter encoder so in in the digital communication system so if it is analog communication the trans trans i mean the transmitter block consists of base band amplifiers or of amplifiers to process to strengthen the signals and and uh, and also a modulator block corresponding modulator block and if it is a digital communication system along with uh, such amplifiers there will be an analog to digital converter first then an encoder encoder along with modulator okay now the third module is a channel third module is a channel uh, the output of this transmitter called the transmitter signal the output of the transmitter is called a transmitter signal uh, now it is passed through a channel uh, so through channel it is going to be received re received at the receiver now the uh, channel may be uh, in, in different form depending on the nature of the communication system so if it is analog Uh, there will be different uh, type of channels if it is digital there will be different type of channels so depending on the nature of the communication system the channel may take a variety of forms um, so it may be a pair of uh, just a twisted pairs or copper or twisted pair of copper wires a coaxial cable a radio link or optical fiber or even a satellite communi a satellite communication okay so the channel takes different forms like a uh, copper wire twisted pair wires uh, coaxial cable uh radio link okay radio link and uh, even an optical fiber like that okay uh so uh, we 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 tell that the transmitted signal and the received signal will be in different form the transmitted signal as well as the received signal will be in different form because uh, there are some modifications uh, occurred when the signal is uh, passed through the channel okay so there is there are some modifications on the signal when it is passed through the channel the modifications can be a distortion an attenuation or some addition of noise it may be a distortion or attenuation or addition of noise so what is a distortion distortion is nothing but it is due to the frequency dependent gain or attenuation of the channel so we can say the distortion is a uh, is due to frequency dependent gain or attenuation of the channel or multipath uh, shift or even uh, like uh, due to a doppler shift doppler shift so distortion uh, is due to different uh, parameters like uh, frequency dependent gain or attenuation of the channel multipath shift or a uh, doppler shift and and also uh, the distortion linear distortions can be eliminated or even we can remove it partly using an equalizer so equalizers are used to remove the linear distortions and um, 
so here the frequency characteristics are inverse to that of the channel so in this uh, linear this uh, linear uh, equalizer the frequency characteristics are inverse to that of the channel to remove the uh, linear uh, distortion non linear distortion and also there is there is there are non linear distortions which is caused by channels whose attenuation is dependent on the amplitude of the signal passing through them so the non linear distortion uh, in non linear distortion the attenuation is dependent on the amplitude of the signal passing through it okay now so the second form of uh, modification is attenuation attenuation so attenuation of the signal through the channel is caused by the power loss in the case of wire line channels okay if it is wired line channels then uh, there will be a power loss the, the power loss is nothing but an attenuation of the signal and uh, spreading and absorption that takes place in the case of free space and atmosphere so if it is a wireless medium wireless channel then the spreading and absorption uh, takes place in the um, uh, free space or medium it is nothing but an attenuation and uh, attenuation increases uh, with the length of the channel so if the channel length is uh, uh, increases again the attenuation increases now the third form of uh, modification is noise okay noise um, so noise the message signal is again corrupted by random interfering signals random interfering signals and uh, some other electrical disturbances so which are together called noise so we can say noise is a random uh, interfering signals or and some electrical disturbances so the noise may originate from external sources uh, such as uh, lightning discharges radiation from automobile ignition or uh, fluorescent tubes uh, uh, some and, and also radiation from the sun etc so these are all some of the examples of noise generated externally through external sources like lightning discharges radiation from automobile ignition fluorescent tubes or radiation from the sun and uh, the noise may also originate from sources internal internal to the channel internal to the channel in the sense inside to uh, inside of the uh, transmission medium uh, so here such as we can say the random movement of electrons in a conductor that is called thermal noise or the randomness inherent in the recombination or diffusion or partitioning of charged particles these are all some of the examples of uh, internal sources of noise internal sources of noise okay so the no internal sources of, of noise are um, random movement of electrons in a conductor that is called thermal noise uh, randomness inherent in the recombination or diffusion or partitioning of charged particles and um, so the channel may be broadly classified as um, wired uh, wire line channels or uh, wireless channels so wire line channels is nothing but examples of telephone lines coaxial cables wave guides optical fibers etc these are all like uh, wire line channels these are all wire line channels then wireless channels uh, some of the examples are microwave radio rf links uh, and uh, underwater acoustic channels etc these are all wire examples of wireless channels microwave radio rf links underwater acoustic channels etc okay so first uh, we can tell about uh, the telephone lines the wire line channel telephone lines so uh, telephone lines normally we can say it is a twisted pair of wires um, so normally we use twisted pair of wires um, for connecting telephone subscribers to the local telephone exchange so this this uh, twisted pair of wires provides a modest bandwidth modest bandwidth of few hundred kilohertz uh, the bandwidth uh, Uh, supporting here uh, in this twisted pair is uh, somewhat uh, very few hundred kilohertz the but they suffer from crosstalk interference and some induced additive noise uh, the main uh, disadvantage of such uh, telephone uh, that is a uh, twisted pair wire is uh, crosstalk interference and induced additive noise and uh, but it provides good voice grade communication over the frequency range of 300 to 3400 hertz the frequency supports here uh, is from 300 to 3400 hertz okay main mainly it is uh, used in the voice communication process uh, um, then second one coaxial cables okay second one coaxial cables um, so coaxial in a coaxial cable uh, we have an outer hollow conductor and an and an inner conductor both are coaxially placed uh, but uh, the 
the pot between outer and inner conductor is filled with dielectric materials right so the coaxial cable uh, the structure is nothing but uh, it, it has an outer hollow conductor and an inner in, uh, conductor both are coaxially placed the po the pot between the outer and inner conductor is filled with dielectric materials now the coaxial cables are used for carrying signals uh, with frequencies ranging from few hundred kilohertz to some 1 gigahertz 1 gigahertz and uh, they can provide a data rate of even 250 to 300 megabits per second okay so the data rate uh, ranges from 250 to 300 megabits per second and the next third one is wave guides um, wave guides are uh, used at frequencies ranging from 1 gigahertz to several hundreds of gigahertz it is uh, high frequency used for high frequency uh, range 1 gigahertz to some several giga hundreds of gigahertz and they can support a large bandwidth of the order of few gigahertz the bandwidth itself it is uh, of uh, gigahertz range uh, there are two different structure rectangular as well as uh, circular waveguide rectangular waveguide and circular waveguide so rectangular copper waveguides the standard of uh, uh, structure is uh, dimension is 25.4 mm cross 12.7 mm uh, it is a standard structure um, with a typical attenuation of 0.11 dB per meter at 10 gigahertz and uh, the waveguides are uh, highly immune to interference and induced additive noise so they, they are very uh, uh, immune to the interference as well as some additive noise and uh, next one microwave radio it is a wireless type of uh, channel microwave radio operating in the line of sight in the line of sight propagation mode okay there should be a an, uh, one to one line of sight uh, between transmitter and receiver and using frequencies in the range of 1 to 300 gigahertz for the transmission of uh, TDM digital data over a long distances. Um, so here an antenna should be placed at some considerable height uh, so as to get a clear line of sight between some successive repeaters and uh, so in, in the in the propagation through uh, year so we need to place antennas at some considerable height so that there will be a clear line of sight between the uh, transmitter and receiver and uh, the bandwidth is very large here and uh, high speed of data transmitter also supports a very high speed of data transmission and the last one is uh, optical fiber so the optical fiber consists of central core surrounded by another layer called a cladding uh, so there will be core and cladding so central core is surrounded by cladding and uh, both core and cladding are more made of uh, uh, silica uh, while the outer jacket uh, is uh, made of plastic which surrounds the cladding and protects it uh, so here the core carries electromagnetic waves the core carries electromagnetic waves or the optical frequencies of, of the order of 10 power 14 hertz the core carries em waves of the order of 10 power 14 hertz and these are these waves are confined to the core uh, by the phenomenon called total internal reflection so total internal reflection is uh, important phenomenon so the waves are confined uh, inside the core uh, and the propagation through the core through this uh, through that phenomena and the modern optical fibers provide a very uh, little attenuation on the order of 0.2 db per kilometer um, so optical fibers support extremely larger bandwidth and, uh, and around 10% uh, of the uh, center frequency. It supports very uh, larger bandwidth. And uh, the advantages of uh, optical fibers are if they are immune to interference and individual noises and they are very small, uh, lightweight and uh, flexibility uh, and the manufacturing cost is very low. These are all the advantages of um, optical fiber.